Welcome to the continued podcast adventures of Superhero Speak. But I think many of the people that love this character and that love superheroes in general have used these stories as inspiration to say, you know what, I'm going to do something good in the world. I'm going to make a difference like my hero when I was a kid. That is my fondest memory of it because when, you, when you're doing comic books, you want them to affect people. Right. You want people to care. You want, you want to strike emotions. And I knew that that clone saga was striking a lot of emotion. Can you yeah. imagine uh, Pulp Fiction starring Goofy and uh, Mickey Mouse? I can totally imagine that. <laughs> I'm no sure one. somebody's written that one. Too. with cheese in France, Mickey. <laughs> what? <laughs> Boy, ale with cheese, Mickey. Yeah. <laughs> I can totally. See? I, I, would, I would watch the hell out of that movie. Yes, I gladly saw, sacrifice that my, my progeny to you, a mighty Marvel beast. <laughs> <laughs> But Neil Adams is somewhere going, hmm, it's, it's my time. Uh, <laughs> How do you measure success? Hey everyone, you're listening to Superhero Speak, and I'm your host Dave. And John. And this week, boys and girls, JD was unable to join us. He is uh, on special assignment. So filling in for him is, of course, friend of the show, Comic book reviewer extraordinaire, host of the D Square podcast, the one and only D Square. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Dave. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Ah, uh, no, I can always count on you. You know, when... absolutely. <laughs> I'm always ready to talk about nerdy stuff, especially when my friends flake out on me. Uh... <laughs> oh, I, I, I won't take offense to that. <laughs> 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 We all need to flake sometimes. It's okay. This is true, especially these days. Criminy. Oh yeah. So so so, how have you been since you've been on last time? Um, anything new and exciting you want to tell us about? I uh, I mean, just more reviews for SuperheroSpeak.com. We've upgraded uh, my podcast, The House of D. Uh, not only is it a podcast on Podbean and Apple, but we do a, a video version now. And so that's uh, something that we stream live on Twitch and, and YouTube. So that's that's kind of fun to upgrade things. I'm not super into the camera thing, but uh, the other partners in the podcast are. So I'm just trying to be good, good sport there. But it's you, fun. You, you get used to it. Like my, at where I work, we're just all conference calls now, and I'm constantly yeah. on video. Yeah, no, it's like that where I work too. Because I'm a leader, they like yeah, they expect you to be. Uh, on video, unless mm-hmm. it, sometimes the meetings are like a hundred people in it, and the CEOs there, so that they're okay with. But otherwise, yeah, you're right. It's it's a whole thing. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. I work remotely, and when they sent me a computer, it doesn't have a camera, and like no one that I uh, in my group has cameras on their computers. So, well, and the problem there is because a bunch of our people got sent home too with just you know regular computers, and we want to get them webcams but for a while there you just couldn't find a webcam yeah you still can't like just regular old um logitechs even the even the older models are like they're they're double triple quadruple the price if you can find them because i i just started looking for another webcam uh, a couple of weeks ago and well those cam girls have to make money some oh sorry uh. <laughs> we're all cam girls now apparently <laughs> <laughs> Cool, cool. How about you, John? Anything, anything new in your world? Anything old? Well, I mean, as for old, that's me. But um, otherwise, uh, not everything's uh, kind of great, actually. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> no, everything, everything's, everything's just like you know, peaches and cream, man. <laughs> peaches and cream. <laughs> I've known you long enough to know what that means. <laughs> We'll leave it oh at that. Oh boy. Here we go again. No, no, oh, actually. Well, okay. Well, actually, yes, literally, here we go again. All right. But, but oh. This is good. The cycle continues. Yeah, speaking of old, uh, actually, I had a, recently had a birthday, uh, oh. turned the big 4 0. And what was funny is the day before my birthday, me and the family went to the river and I was skipping some rocks and got this bright idea. Hey, why don't I start picking up big rocks and throwing them? <laughs> and then so the next day, the whole right side of my 
body hurt. And I'm like, okay, I'm I'm here now. I'm well. I just turned to the big five zero, and let me tell you, it doesn't get better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we also just, discovered that you and I share the same birthday. Yes, that as well. So happy birthday, and yeah, Ju- uh, Juneteenth birthday, brothers. That's me and you, buddy. <laughs> awesome. Ah. Uh, Yes, but um, as someone who just turned 46, it yeah, it doesn't get better. <laughs> <laughs> I got to start coming out with those bionic body parts at some point. I was going to say the Six Million Dollar Limb lied to us. Yeah. It's like <sighs> I figured we'd all be making those slow motion movements to punch through walls by now. <laughs> uh, it's funny how that worked for so many years on television. I know. <laughs> So, hmm. so what have I been up to? Oh, thanks for asking. Uh, <laughs> Moving on. Oh, never mind. The, the longer you talk, the longer it takes to get to the, you know, the media madness. So go, go, go ahead. <laughs> Just tell us everything, Gabe. Uh, so, Run so, the clock out. <laughs> so, of course, as everyone knows, we're part of the Geek World All Stars uh, Podcast Network, and we just recorded a crossover uh, episode that will be coming out later this week, and. Uh, all the main hosts were actually on this one. All the podcasts were represented this time, so that was cool. Nice. And uh, and we talked about the, the – the, I'll tell you the topic. The idea was you were supposed to pick a TV show that maybe people don't like or people don't watch for some reason and pitch it to everyone else on the panel, and then they had to tell you if they were going to watch it or not. And – uh and I won't tell you what I picked. You guys have to listen to find out. <laughs> okay. But it'll be on our it'll be on our our stream before you know it. So. So yeah, that was my. I wonder who's picking the Golden Girls. <laughs> no, no, that's funny. No one picked the Golden Girls. Actually, everyone picked something modern. Like there wasn't oh, anyone. Okay. There wasn't anyone uh, except for one person, uh, Eight Bit Ray from the Girl of Rain podcast, and he, your 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 new buddy. And yes. um, he had a very specific show that he picked, uh, which was to convince um, Joey from the So Wizard podcast and his show that he picked. Oh, OK, so here's the spoiler uh, was Dragon Ball Super. Oh, oh, <laughs> I just happen to be rewatching that entire um, season now. <laughs> I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan, and I'm ashamed to say that besides the like the movies from uh, Super, I have not watched Super at all. And I've actually learned that in the manga, I think in the manga, or maybe in the show, that my favorite character becomes stronger than Goku. And that's, so I really should be more on that. I'm ashamed. Your favorite character? The Prince of Saiyans, Vegeta. Oh, oh, in a way. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's not straight. He's stronger, but yeah, you're. I mean. It, it doesn't happen often. I got to take the pictures where they come. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Because, you know, he is the boss man. But, um, yeah, no, you, you got to watch it. It's probably one of the best tournament arcs I've, I've seen in a long, long time. So, and it's, yeah. it's, it, towards the end, that's when you'll get, like, I, there's some, uh, there's some videos on YouTube if you, like, uh, reaction videos, but they have reaction videos from, like, Mexico, from stadiums that are all, they're, they're showing it in. Wow. And, and just the cheering and the camaraderie and everything. It's just, it's amazing. So you, you gotta, you gotta see it. You, you gotta go okay. through it. And then, you know, we can talk after that because it's just fun, man. It seems like it. It really does. So yeah, I really do need to get on that. Mm. Um, so speaking of, of, of course, the Geek World All Stars Podcast Network, um, and how we're all friends on Twitter. We should get into some social media madness. <laughs> no, we don't. No, really, really don't. We don't, we don't. There isn't a lot of news to talk about this week, so. Uh, <laughs> I know. So I I brought a lot of stuff in. Um, so one of the things we talked about uh, recently, of course, was the trailer for Bill and Ted's. Uh, what's it called? Get old. <laughs> <laughs> Bill and Ted's put on your rose colored glasses because <laughs> face the music. And, um, and of course, uh, when we tweeted about that, uh, random Randy Savage from Colt 45 podcast, uh, tweeted at us, sad. I feel sad watching the trailer. And 
I included I it gif. because the gif. I love it. It's sad Batman pushing an empty swing in the rain. Yeah. <laughs> and it's all black and white. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, That's horrible. <laughs> it's, 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 it's wonderful. Um, but I get it. It's, I get it. And I think I said it when we talked about the trailer. It's like, he's, he, they're, 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 they're kind of old. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is going to require you suspend disbelief. But I will tell you, a spoiler alerts for the trailer, I guess. But when you find out they're in prison, I think in the future, I don't know. Now I'm kind of interested. At first I was like, this is stupid. But then I saw that. And I'm like, oh wait, that's kind of. Well, they, yeah, they're meeting them set. They're going, you know, yeah. meeting themselves in the future. So. Eh. so. Of course, uh, one of the other things that we discussed was J.K. Simmons is sticking around as the one and only J. Jonah Simpson. Um, and he has. Apparently already recorded stuff for upcoming Marvel projects that's in the can. And we talked about that. And of course, uh, our good friend Timothy Jones of Sour Grapes, uh, said J.K. Simmons was and is perfect as J. Jonah Simpson. Maybe they'll have Peter working at the bugle in the next Spidey film. I hope they have Simmons as J.J.J. in every Holland and Spidey film going forward. Disney can definitely afford all those cigars. <laughs> um, it's true. Yes. And, uh, yeah, oh wait, that's a no brainer. Oh, and he <laughs> actually said, uh, he said instead of J Jonah Jameson, he said J Jonah Simpson. So he correct, he corrected that. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, uncle Redbeard said the best possible choice was a perfect casting. And of course, random Randy Savage said, where are my pictures of Spider-Man? Hmm. Um, which the response that I gave to Randy doesn't make sense. I said, wait, were you on Twitter while we were recording? So while we recorded, he tweeted that while we were recording the crossover. <laughs> <laughs> so I called him out on it. Um, and <laughs> then, funny. and then our, 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 our new, friend on social media Bendis, Shadow Walker One said, I'm not crazy on him. I feel it time to get rid of him. No. Are you <laughs> Yeah, you know what? Go t- dude, go watch I'm talking to him. Go watch Whiplash and then then think about trying to get rid of him. <laughs> that uh, man will break you. <laughs> uh well I replied with a, a the gif of uh Bill Murray from Ghostbusters when they were doing the, the test in the beginning for the clairvoyance. Yeah. And he, and he goes, ooh, close, but definitely <laughs> wrong. Um, I don't know. I'm also, I, I, I understand some people get, oh, it's time for a new actor kind of thing, but from what we saw in Far From Home, they're definitely reinventing the character a little bit for this, for the MCU. And I think it's a yeah. good direction to go. Mm hmm. I mean, he's an excellent actor and this character can be like somewhat of glue in the, in the MCU because yeah, he's like the Alex Jones of the Marvel universe. So not only can he be with Spider-Man, but you know, he could be talking about the Avengers. He could be the person that gives, uh, you know, the, the anti-mutant people when the X-Men come out, you know, their, their platform. So it could be huge. We could be seeing him in a lot of stuff and well, uh, he's perfect. And just think about it in, in, uh, was it, uh, uh, multiverse of madness and yeah. the, the spider verse, the upcoming spider verse. He could, he could play all of those because he, yeah. uh, you know, and you could see his old version from, from Toby Maguire. So, you know, oh. it, it worked with him because, because uh, come on, he's, he's, it's, it's, it's Simmons, man. He's, he's just a nice guy. Oops. Sorry. All right. <laughs> Yeah. See, are you say Simmons and the music starts to play. He's that good. Uh. Now on superhero speak when we dance. Um, <laughs> uh, if you don't get that reference, you're not old. So uh, I'm probably happier. On the on a related note, uh, Mega Podtastic or Joe Fiore, our good friend, um, had responded with. A, he accepts our invitation to be a guest on the show, and uh, we will we will work that out. Of course, we couldn't do it this week because it's JD who wants to talk to him most of all, and he's not here this week. And he said, J. Jonah Jameson's next appearance in a Marvel movie 
will be in Morbius. That is mm. the one he's talking about that's already in the can. To which I said no, um, <laughs> with an exclamation point. And then he brought up, of course, a screenshot from the IMDb page. Uh, and it says it's heavily rumored at this point. So I'm kind of like, I get it. It makes sense because that's tied to Spider-Man more than anything. Yeah. Um, but there is a weird relationship with Sony and the Marvel movies right now. Yeah, it really, it really is strange because as much as I was talking about him being ingrained into the MCU, how ingrained can you be when at any time there could be a tiff between Sony and Marvel and boom, they can no longer use the character, which I'm sure I'll tell you what Marvel's probably hating most right now is that they cannot make Miles Morales like the main character of the MCU right now. It would kill. People yeah. love that character and for good reason. And particularly now with things going on, it's even, you know, would be even amplified, but yet they can't do it, uh, because of this teeter totter relationship. You know, I mean, they both understand there's mutual benefit there, but still it can be ripped apart. Well, as long as Tom Holland is there to, <laughs> to, to push <laughs> Sony in the right direction. I mean, yeah. Know. Yeah. I mean, we all know that was Tom who got them to kiss and make up. So. Um, uh, he's making up for all the spoilers that he uh, spills. Um, also, we recently uh, had talked about the Wonder Woman movie being delayed again to the end of the year. And uh, Joe replied to this again. Uh, um, I am not happy about it. In the wake of a months long shutdown, months as in plural, uh, mm. not as in a, a month possessive, long mm. shutdown. Theaters are really in bad financial shape. They need these big blockbusters to open to get butts in seats. The longer they delay these films, the longer the struggle continues for theaters. Well, um, yeah, but they can't if they can't release them until people can actually go to the theaters. Well, that's an interesting. I mean, because I was going to say this is an interesting point. Um, so the original plan was that AMC was going to be. I think they said like. 300 or their 400 and some theaters in the United States would be open by July 4th weekend because uh -huh. a lot of states, states were reopening. Um, and then this, but the states reopened too fast. And so now they're, well, now they're closing back down again. So a couple of the states, um, not all of them, like PA, we're still opening. We're still on track. So um, well, yeah, but ours, ours are going up. The only, like the only states that are going down are like Connecticut, New Hampshire, New York, and think like Maine. So well they're on vacation right now. Yes. Yeah. So so the, um like the point I was getting at is like you have movies like of course Bill and Ted who And Wonder Woman. That never like they were still planning to release and they just announced that they're pushing it back, but only two weeks. You know, because they're doing a they're gonna be coming out in theaters and I think streaming at the same time. So that's ballsy. Are we, uh, as we've talked about many times on the show, is that where we're headed? You know, is that going to be the norm going forward for movies? Well, until like, I, I, I okay. As we were discussing originally, I am old. Um, so I like have this nostalgia thing about going to a movie theater, especially during, especially during the blockbusters and being able to talk to all the other fans that are there because they act, they really love the movie and they're excited to see it. And then like having a shared experience of watching this movie on a huge screen with popcorn that probably cost you 20 bucks and, you know, paying way overpaying for Sour Patch Kids and, and, and getting that really bad oil that they call popcorn butter on your hands. <laughs> um, I mean, but I like, I cannot see us ever giving that up. Like I, I understand why we closed down all of the drive, the drive-ins is because they could only op operate seasonally and you know, you get a good rainstorm and you're done. But, um, but movie theaters, I can't like, that's a, it's a social thing, right? I can't see them. I can't so, see even the young, younger people not for wanting For me, that it's experience. totally not. Uh, I mean, that's just me personally. I mean, don't wrong. I'm glad I saw Avengers Endgame in the theater, mm. but it's going to be a while before you cram me into a building with a lot of people. I happen to live right by a, a drive-in, which is cool. Um, but I, I really think they should 
I, I don't think we're going to see a lot of people back in theaters. I just don't. I think these. Oh, you're, you're change. talking because of coronavirus. Right. Yeah, no, I would. So, no, I like, yeah, we're not giving it up, but we're not going. We should not do it until like there's a an actual yeah, but, vaccine. But, but here's the here's <laughs> the problem. And I think this is one of the things that Joe's getting at is that theater movie theaters have been struggling for a while now and they need the big uh what we call tentpole or blockbuster movies uh they need so many of those a year to stay afloat and now all of those mo- movies were canceled this year or at the end of the year will these theaters even be open for when these movies come out I mean, if they didn't bank that money that they got from charging me eight dollars for fifty cents worth of popcorn and seven dollars for a dollar worth of soda, uh, yeah, and this and this is the problem with all the large companies and everything with the bailouts. It's like we're you, you just the, the these theater, yeah, you go into a theater and you spend four times for like a a box of of thin mints or whatever of junior mints. Than you do in the in the grocery store right next to the damn theater. I I don't understand where all that money went. Like I I get that they don't make a lot of money on the actual tickets themselves. It's all right. in the concessions. Well, but but then what? I mean, maybe that business the, maybe that business thing needs to be fixed. Like they from, need to adjust. From my understanding, it's uh they do have razor thin mark uh, uh margins that they make. Because it costs so much for them to show the movies. The movie companies well, keep upping how much they charge and, and, and the so percentage that, maybe, that they take. Maybe that needs to change. Like that are the, are the, um, the studios going to have to start rethinking things when AMC closes down and they can't, like if they're making so much money right. with the ticket sales, maybe that will start to squeeze them into saying, Hey, maybe we should let up on some of these theaters. Right. And that's the whole problem. We've talked about this too before with the model. Like, um, so if they, if, if movie theaters go away because they're not able to reopen and in time for the, the blockbuster movies to come out, then are the theater, are the movie companies going to make anything off of these movies because they can't release them in the theaters? You know, like, yeah, they're charging 20 bucks to watch it at home, but if you've got a family of six, watching you know then you start inviting friends over because it's like ah, it's 20 bucks i'll have three friends or four friends come over we'll all watch it together then they're not making anywhere near what they made in the theaters you know so it's just going to hurt them in the long run so yeah unless they invest in like quick and easy drive-in or outside amphitheaters and yeah uh, you know if you got a movie right now right now in this day and age the only way you're making money this year is to get either streaming it, which, like you said, there's some pros and cons to that, or I don't know, somehow <laughs> putting it someplace where you can watch it outside. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 interesting. We just have to keep an eye on it and see what happens because um, because that's the I thing think too. Our like, whole civilization's going to change. I heard. I don't want to get any conspiracy theories, but I heard there's another virus flu coming out of China. It's just I don't know. There's a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not let's not get into conspiracy. Things. Yeah, I'll yeah I'll, I'll cram down my. <laughs> now, if we're if we're going to tinfoil hat. Yeah if, yeah, if we're going to like announce any conspiracy theories, they're going to be ones that we make up. Damn it! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like John O'Grady will be starring in the next Batman movie. So speaking okay. of, <laughs> you weren't supposed to. You know, don't worry. The Ninja Lawyers will be by your house tonight. No. Oh. Well, I didn't tell him who you were playing. We all oh. know that that what's his face is playing Batman. Yeah, but is, man, you looked good in those uh those green uh tidy whiteies. Oh. oh my god! <laughs> in that red shirt. Oh wait. Anyway, uh, speaking of Batman, of oh. course we talked. The big news we talked about last week is Michael Keaton returning, and uh, Shadow Walker, who doesn't like J.K. Simmons, did say, uh, the vibe I get is this movie will tie all Batman together so we could get Clooney and Kilmer back in suits too. <laughs> uh, I don't know about Kilmer. And, um, I don't yeah, think Kilmer, Kilmer, he's going to have to work end. out. Yeah. He's going to work out a lot. To be well, it's not, to... it's not just that. But yeah, he's Men- crazy too. Mentally yeah. like, uh, yeah. 
I, I don't know. He could be not, the Batman who laughs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> not only that, um, I don't think Clooney would ever do it again. Like, he's gotten so much flack for his betrayal. I don't think he'd ever put the cow on again. Maybe Which I don't understand. It wasn't that. That wasn't the worst. Oh, you're horrible. <laughs> well, again, that was the writing. That was Schumacher, right? Uh, that's, that was a big part of it, yeah. Yeah. And, but yeah, who, who knows? And, you know, Cl- there's also Clooney's getting a little bit old, and he's having a lot of fun being married to Amal Clooney. So I don't – like, they're, they're on, like, the national circuit now. I don't know that, like, movies really interested him that much anymore. Yeah. Well, and even Keaton's timing is weird. It's like he got PST, uh, PTS, I'm sorry, from Schumacher's films when he saw the bat nipples. He was just like, oh, I can never <laughs> be Batman ever again. But uh, now he has passed, and so now I feel safe. I don't know. It's just kind of weird timing to me. Uh, well, he's also, like, got a lot of other good movies under his belt, and he's like, his, he's go- his, uh, his stock is rising, so... Yeah, or he's not worried about the typecasting or stigma that comes along with. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, they got that out of the system with Birdman. <laughs> that was the whole point <laughs> of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so the, another thing we talked about was the secret cameo of Mark Hamill in The Mandalorian. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, he was the voice of the bartender. And I would like to say I've we've, we've reached a... a a mini goal of uh, superhero speak. Um, so we tweeted out, did you spot the uh, Hamill himself cameo on Mandalorian? No. Click here to learn more, of course. And it's a click. It's a, you know, to get people to, to listen to the show. Mark Hamill liked our tweet. <gasps> so we can, I mean, we can, we can end yeah. it here, guys. This is it. We've, we've <laughs> peaked. It's not going to get any better, but now we know Mark, you're following us and you're listening. That's uh, great. Well, it, his hip finger slipped. I mean, come on, obviously. No, Stop. he's pretty good. No, he he's pretty good because he actually – now, it wasn't as good as a tweet as yours. He just – I caught him on a an error. He said, you know, blah, blah, blah needs to be stooped instead of stopped. And I was like, I'd rather it be stopped. And he actually liked that. Huh. Um, so he's a pretty – you know, he's a pretty cool guy. So he – Oh, I know. But yeah. Love him. So, uh, so of course, Timothy Jones replied, I do not know that. Oh, I did not know that. I'll have to go back and watch it. I wonder if he Jedi mind tricked people to order more drinks. And, uh, <laughs> and Mark Hamill liked that as well. So, so Tim, uh, replied thank you to him for liking it. <laughs> nice. Yes. So yes, um, we've peaked Very guys. Cool. That's, that's yeah, it. Well, All like right. I said, last, I'm 50, so. <laughs> and the last thing was, um, uh, actually originally included because, um, you know, somebody here <laughs> liked our conversation, I guess, about the Fantastic Four, uh, last week or the Fan Four Stick. Yeah. Um, yeah. Would you like, to, would you like, Don, would you like to read your tweet? <laughs> Sure, sure. So I, I took my son to see Fan Four Stick in the theater. I knew it was <laughs> going to be trash, but my boy likes the thing. Uh-huh. Imagine my horror as we watch, as we have to watch Ben Grimm kill people for the military and like it. <laughs> uh, That's about right. Uh, and Tim replied to that. I started watching it, but had to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Volsker's your brother, right? Correct? Yes. Yes, and he said, I refuse to watch that movie. And the fact that it is on Disney Plus makes me even more mad it exists. <laughs> it is kind of a, it is kind of a F you, I don't know, I kind of feel that way too. Uh, so I said, uh, we should do a special episode, Everything Wrong with Fan Four Stick. Um, to which you replied, I suggest you drink first, <laughs> but sure. There's a lot there. I will throw this out a how, ahead of how time. Many, how many episodes what? would that eat up, Dave? <laughs> Michael B. Jordan played a great human torch, and that was not an issue with the movie. It was a bright point. Um, of course, then J.D. asked, does that mean I have to watch it? And I said, yes. <laughs> and he didn't like that. <laughs> Happy Gilmore. <laughs> yep. So, So maybe it'll happen, guys. 
I don't know. Maybe it'll be a crossover episode with the D squared podcast. Hey, we're down. So we'll have to see. That could be in the future, everyone. Keep your ears and eyes open. Ah, all right. Well, on that note, we're going to uh, hear a word from our good friend D squared on how you can be a part of social media yeah. madness. Enjoying the show? Want to be part of social media madness? Make sure you are following SuperheroSpeak.com where you can find all of the show's social media links at the top of the page. While you're there, you can check out old episodes of the podcast as well as some other great content. Check the site often because we are posting some great comic reviews as well as comic book and movie news content every day. Make sure and follow us on Twitter at SuperheroSpeak. And while you're there, check out the rest of the Geek World All-Stars Podcast Network. You can follow them at stars underscore geek. The Geek World All-Star Podcast Network include great programs such as the Pop Prison Power Podcast, Cult 45, So Wizard, Fans on Patrol, the Gorilla Brain Podcast, and of course, Superhero Speak. Search for hashtag GWAllStars. You will not be disappointed. Now, it's back to Dave and the boys on Superhero Speak. Ah, that was wonderful. I so enjoyed that every time. (laughs) (laughs) Always happy to please. And don't forget to check out uh, a couple of Don's uh, new reviews have been put up on the site. A couple more are coming. And, of course, check out the D-Squared Podcast. And on that note, we we'll take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. After these messages, we'll be right back. All right, we are back. And there isn't a lot of great news this week. Um, just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, the one I added at the end there. Have you guys had a chance to watch the trailer, quote unquote, for Muppets Now, the new Muppet show coming to Disney Plus? No, I have not seen that. <laughs> I can't be I can't believe they replaced all of their guns with like scythes. Oh my god. That's <laughs> Looney Tunes, not the Muppets. The Muppets yeah. never used guns. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That's not how I remember it. <laughs> um any, did you say scythes? <laughs> that's yes. what they that's what they did with Elmer Fudd. Oh god, yeah. Elmer Fudd wields a scythe now, that's even more sinister. <laughs> I know, isn't it? <laughs> like, oh no, here we go. Use? Like he's a hunter, he's got a gun. Okay, but hunting with a scythe? I mean what, what wow. how do you explain that? <laughs> are are we gonna go down a rabbit hole here? Uh, <laughs> hey, you said there wasn't a whole lot of news. <laughs> Get it? Bugs bunny, rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha, ha, ha. Um, all right. So there's a new show coming to Disney Plus. It's called Muppets Now. Uh, it feels like it goes kind of back to their variety show type days yeah. from the original Muppet show. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I don't, they keep, they keep calling them, I think, uh, Muppetsodes. So I don't know if that's a play on webisode. And I don't know if that means yeah. these are going to be shorts. Like, they don't give you a lot of information in the trailer, just quick clips of, of some of the celebrities that are going to be on it. So, so any interest, uh, John, in I, watching a new Muppet show? Well, I mean, if it's done right. But the yeah. problem is that I'd be me- – like you guys, I would probably be measuring it up against the old Muppet show, which was a work of art. Like, it, yeah. it balanced everything so well, and it had so much heart. Like you, I don't, I don't even know if it's possible to make something like that these days. So with with all the triangulation and the the studios like you know getting on top of things and um, the current culture, I don't know if it's good. I don't think they could make something that pure anymore. But you know, if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be like the the torchbearers for Jim Henson. So I'm definitely going to take a look at it. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely interested in it. I was a big fan of it when I was a kid. I, I still remember, you know, just uh, Elton John being on there. That yes. was epic. And Mark Hamill. Uh, 
I think that if they make it truly funny again, you know, you have celebrities on there doing these funny skits with Muppets, you know, that that'd be interesting. But when I think of the quality of celebrities from back then to now, are you interested in Kim Kardashian being on the Muppets? Like, no. Oh, God. See, that's you know, we'll get reality stars. But here's the thing. We're not interested in it, but right. the younger generation yeah. might be. I mean, put Taylor Swift on there. I mean, my daughters will be all about it. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it could be doable, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to want comedy because I just don't think the level of celebrities are going to interest me. Yeah. I mean, maybe put Robert Downey Jr. on there or something. See? Okay. There you but go. They, and that's the thing, though. They when they chose even back then when they chose celebrities to be on there, they chose them with heart. Like you, they 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 chose people that you know were genuine. And mm. these days, that is extremely hard to find. <laughs> well, Mark, we know you listen. Um, can you do a, an episode of Muppets Now to to help bring oh. up the the level of heart? Oh, yes. that would be like, that would be epic. That would be just the best. Um, what if we got the Luke Skywalker we all wanted, but it was on a Muppet show? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, con- conversely, conversely, given, given the times, he could go on there and be Joker. Now, yeah. <laughs> that would, I don't know how that would work. <laughs> um, but <laughs> yeah. And it's funny though, cause like uh, that Muppet show that they did a couple years ago that was on ABC. And lasted a season. Yeah. It was funny because they were trying to take a modern style sitcom and make yeah. it star the Muppets. So it was an absurd, absurdist idea, but they didn't push the absurdity, absurd, absurdist humor in the show. And I think yeah. it's why it didn't work. Like either you, either you're going full, this is absurd, or you're going to be like, okay, Let's do something different because it doesn't make sense to have the Muppets walking around like they work in an office. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, I hopefully they don't like again, let this just, just go back to your roots or do something completely different. But yeah, don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Moving on. Um, so it has been revealed that our good, uh, friend our our love interest marco robbie uh okay has been slated <laughs> to star in a new pirates of the caribbean movie now this is not a continuation of the johnny depp storyline this is a spin-off that's going to be a female-led uh, version and in fact apparently they are still in development for the next johnny depp movie right. if they're going to make it so 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 how well can Margot Robbie like drink and like fall, <laughs> fall around? Well, well you know, somebody, I think it's totally going to be her Harley Quinn character. I was going to say somebody had already brought that up on another podcast I listened to where they're talking about this. Like, is she just going to play Harley Quinn and have that as the pirate, or is she going to do something different for the role? You know, I don't know. It's a good question. I I, I can't. I don't know if I could picture her in that role. I can't. I think it's got all the makings of a new dead horse that they can keep eating, just like they did the first. <laughs> it's still alive now. <laughs> yeah. But they will ride it to dust. Yeah. You see, she's popular. It's a recognizable franchise. Uh, well, and that's the whole thing, right? We're five movies deep into it. And, yeah. Um, and they've gone down in popularity since like the third one, I think. And it's like, well, okay, is this an attempt to revive the franchise by putting a spin on a fresh face to it, you know, or is this trying to cash in on a known franchise with a known uh, box office draw? And it's like, okay, well then, does it work? Like to me, do you have a quality script already in plan, uh, already in works, or is this like, oh no, this is just a vehicle and now we're going to try to create a script around it? You know, or it could be Disney saying, "Hey, people like Mar- uh, Margot Robbie, and they like that Harley Quinn character. So why don't we just bring her on over here, uh-huh. and that way we don't have to worry about that no more." <sighs> Are you gonna That's... go see it, John? Am I gonna go see it? 
Oh, that seems. <laughs> I mean, I, like I'm so like it's like you said though. Like they the the movies started going downhill after like well I, even two two was okay. After that, they were just they were literally just you know look here's a, here's here's uh, here he is drunk again. Go give yeah. us money. So you know <laughs> I don't if you're gonna keep being it. He's gonna I be wacky. This, He's gonna be wacky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and and they're all going to have really bad accents. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I I I'd have to start. I'd have to see what uh, what the the scuttlebutt is, <laughs> literally, um, <laughs> I, 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 before the movie comes out. Before I like make a decision, because otherwise, in this in this day and age, it probably won't be long before it's uh, on demand or something. You know. That's true. I mean, I know. Don, you'll be there day one, popcorn and Oh, hands. absolutely. I love pirates. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, you love Margot Robbie, right? I no, I no, I, I'm not a I, I'm not that type of person to be honest with you. I'm, she I doesn't thought, I thought you were married. I am married, that's what I'm saying. But to a to a man? Wait, wait. No, 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 <laughs> no you know, but but to to clear it up, Dave, like I mean Margot Robbie is a certain type of actor, right? Uh-huh. And and yeah, guys might go to see her because of the way she looks. But if she were like a really good character actress, then I would be there. Yeah, right? that's true. But but they they're putting Margot Robbie in because she's Margot Robbie, not because if they were really serious about a reboot or a continuation of a separate line of stories, they would have gone with somebody with you know more capability not with somebody whose names have to be at the list right now right and i want to clarify yes i'm married to a woman um <laughs> what what i mean is is marvel Robbie is not my type she does see she enjoys taking what i i need oh. my partner to enjoy you know that's, that's good i have a specific yeah hmm. <laughs> i think she's a vegetarian um, uh, yeah see that's not gonna i'm, so, I'm sorry i'm sorry margo i know you were hopeful <sighs> Um, <laughs> all right, I'm with you guys. I want to, well, let's wait till at least we see a, a preview to make any decisions on this. Yeah, um, I kind of have to. Harley Quinn of the Caribbean, that's what it'll be. Yeah, that's, and that's not, I don't think that's good enough. Um, moving on, uh, of course, <laughs> we had uh, a Justice League movie not that long ago. Yeah, it was then, literally called a Justice League movie. Not- uh, they're, going to, <laughs> they're going to be doing, they're going to be giving us the Snyder Cut apparently early next year, uh, on, uh, HBO Max. And in the meantime, uh, of course, Ray Fisher, who played Cyborg in that movie, um, famously at Comic Con said that he thought Josh Whedon was the, a great choice for finishing up the movie. Um, as of yesterday, he was not yesterday? so much. <laughs> oh no! As of today, um, he said, "I'd like to take a moment and forcefully retract every bit of this statement." And it's a video of him uh, saying he thought Josh Whedon was a good choice to finish up the movie. Um, That's kind of sad. Yeah. So no, that makes him a dick. <laughs> True. I mean, just because, a he's going back on his own words, so that that that's already. But don't don't talk trash about you. I'm sorry. I'm hmm. Josh Whedon is my number two X Men writer, as well as he brought us that wonderful movie, uh, The Avengers. So I I get sore when I when I read this. So this is completely uncalled for, Ray Fisher. I wasn't a fan, but I certainly won't be now. And yes, you sir are a dick. And all of all of the scenes that he had in Justice League, um, I'm willing to bet most of those were not written by Joss. Like, mm-hmm. and 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 the characterization of him in that movie was horrible. Like, he was just this, you know, guy in a hoodie. Yeah. Why did they put him in a hoodie? Great. Yeah. Thank, thanks for the typecasting. And um, you know, and just just all all dark and brooding, and I don't know what I am. And blah, blah, blah. it's like. Um, yeah, why is he on Joss about it when his character was ruined by, <laughs> you know, I mean, just come on. Yes. Um, no, no, it, though, I think this brings an excellent point, uh, up is that when you have actors who are in a movie 
and are actively promoting it in press junkets, they always say stuff like this, like, oh, Mm -hmm. the director was great, blah, blah. And then later on, when things happen, they either, A, the truth comes out when it's not going to affect their career anymore, or B, I think this is a situation where it's like, it feels like the fans have shifted, where they're like, you know, Snyder cut, Snyder cut, and, and Warner Brothers said, okay, fine, here's the Snyder cut. So... Now he's trying to appeal to those fans, but as, as you eloquently put out there, uh, Don, um, this makes him to be a dick, <laughs> you know, I mean, especially the wording. I forcefully yeah. retract it, you know, like really Ray, come on, you know, cyborg is supposed to be the fun loving teen Titan. What's going on here? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So. Interesting. You know, I don't know what this means. Also in the long term, like, is he going to be cyborg anymore or is that done? You know, he's and that's it. Cause I mean, I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't think he gets many roles, at least not that I know of, but I'm not a really big movie guy. So he may be just trying to like ignite the Snyder cut and hopes for a sequel. I, I, I that's the only, I, there's just no reason to do that. Did he see the movie? He wants a sequel? <laughs> I mean, well, that's... I mean, his bank account might need a sequel. Oh, yeah, that would do it. Yeah. Well, he'll, <laughs> here's the thing, right? Like, and I don't, I'm not privy to how these things work, but if they release the movie again, um, does he get royalties twice on both versions? I would say if he does have that, if he has royalties into his contract, Unless they found some legal mumbo jumbo around it, maybe they put a, I don't know, period or exclamation at the end of the movie. I don't in a title, so it changes. But I would think so. Yeah. If you got royalties for the first, if the movie with the exact same name, featuring mm-hmm. your exact likeness, right. I'd be getting paid. I'd be getting paid. Yeah. So. One way or the other. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ray. <laughs> Ray. 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 I think you should have tried to word it a little differently. And if you'd like to come on the show to defend your, your, your tweets, uh, we'd gladly have you on talk about it. Uh, well, if Mark's listening, come on, Ray's probably listening too. So. Right. Give him a call. Making a lot of assumptions there. Oh, you're just, you're, you're, you're just being a defeatist. All right. I am so Debbie Downer. Okay. Go ahead. Moving on. Uh, a follow up. To, uh, I've got two follow-up articles here uh, to things that we talked about previously. Uh, the first one being um, Henry Cavill has actually come out and said in a recent interview on Variety that uh, he wants to keep playing Superman uh, as long as he can. So, you know, okay. this this talk of, you know, of course, last week we talked about how it's been revealed that he's still under contract for a couple movies and he might be cameoing and, and it was considered heavy rumor. And now he's coming out and saying like, no, I want to keep playing Superman as long as, you know, people let me play Superman. I mean, that happens a lot of times right before it's like, boom, it's, it's announced. Here's yeah. Shazam two and Superman's a part of it, you know, as Henry Cavill as Superman. So that would work. That would probably work. So. I'm excited. I liked him as Superman. I know not everybody did, but uh, some of it was more rioting than the actor in CGI mishap, so hopefully he's learned from that. Hmm. Um, Geralt has no facial hair, so I think we're good. Well, he does sometimes, <laughs> though. Well, I don't know. Stick with the stick with the as, clean-shaven Geralt. As long as he signs, doesn't sign any contracts that say he has to grow a mustache yeah. and keep it. <laughs> I still can't get over that. That was, oh, uh, God. Yeah, well, the movie was so successful because of the mustache, I'm sure. Was actually, it? that one was kind of, I actually think that movie was uh, somewhat, but, yeah, I, I, I don't think anyone cares about mustaches. No, I don't think so either. And it was like, you know, after seeing the movie, obviously, spoilers, um, he plays the villain. Uh, yeah. More or less in the movie. So it's like, was it a trope? You know, it's the twirling mustache villain. Like, you know, we're, we're, here's your hint that he's the bad guy because he's got a mustache. Yeah. It's like, it was just so silly. You're right. Like, who cares that he had a mustache? But apparently, 
uh, the people who make the Mission Impossible movies feel like, nope, nope, got to have the mustache. <sighs> like that, uh, what's in that, Dr. Doctor Disrespect that just got banned from Twitch? Ever see that guy? He's got like this mullet wig and a pasted on porn star stash. Huh. Sunglasses. Looks like a NASCAR driver. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he's got a big old stash that you can you can see him like it's not real, but he's always like pushing it back on. So I just think it just must be important. <laughs> well, let's see the the movie. I will say this: the movie did have a hundred seventy eight million dollar budget, and it made seven hundred ninety one million at the box office. So I guess mustaches sell movies. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we're talking about Mission Impossible Fallout. Um, so you excited, John, for him to continue playing? <sighs> we'll have to see about the writing. I mean, like like we said before, like I've I've caught him in other stuff now, so I know he's got acting ability. It's it it was all Snyder, so um, maybe it's just going to be hard to bridge that gap because right. the the I think the difference between between being told to basically sulk in every scene and and then being you know ha- having to portray Superman the way he's supposed to be, I think it'll be kind of jarring. It, it might be one of those things where we just you know uh, Justice League never happened. <laughs> you know, we're yeah. we're gonna Jar Jar Binks uh, Justice League and uh, <laughs> and and Superman and, and we, Man of Steel. Why don't we Mandela affect it? It never existed. Um, yeah. And would you see then that the, it is related to what you just said? Would you go? Would you be excited for a Man of Steel two? Again, I would. How do you, it depends on the how, writing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not just on the writing, but that's that's going to be a hard sell because uh, the first one was so bad. I disagree with you there. I, I know it's got a bad rap. I don't, I don't know, man. Don't get me wrong. Michael Shannon's a large part of that. I loved his odd, but I still, I don't know. I like that movie, man. You should have killed him, Dad. Well, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, how do you bridge the gap between the horrible writing, the characterization, which is like, you know, murder Superman? Like that, that could have been the beginning for Brightburn. <laughs> I mean. I, I just uh, I don't I don't I don't know. That would be a hard sell, even if it's a good movie. It's hard to, you know, the the continuity matters to me. I, I, other people, not so much probably, but for for me, having a having a, a storyline that's you know even and um and continuous and you know like the characterization's the same. I, following a hero's journey you you don't see it in this you won't see it in this even if the second movie's good right yeah no that's true um we'll have to see i know i'm a curmudgeon but what am i gonna do and and on the opposite end uh, i'm a oh they're flying superman and general zod are flying around punching each other like dragon ball z this is great (laughs) i you know so i get it yeah yeah but they did kind of you know, excuse the expression, they kind of blew their load in that one, right? Why would you start with Zod? I mean, and 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 not only just Zod, it's like, how do you... They, the storyline was so bad because they had how many Kryptonians there? They should have been able yeah. to take out Superman in a heartbeat. How about Flashpoint resets things in the DC universe? That you could sell me on. And definitely. then... The next movie we see him in is Shazam 2, which mm-hmm. we know Shazam is a brighter, happier movie, and he's a brighter, happier Superman in that. So so what you're saying is he, Barry goes back and sa- saves his mother and Zack Snyder's never born? Yeah, I could get on board with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. where, 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 where Hans Zimmer never became a, 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 a musician? <laughs> yes, I am, I, am, I am all for that. Oh, poor Hans. Poor, poor Hans. 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 Honestly, <laughs> as much as I like the Man of Still, I will admit Superman is not a great movie character. So if they do Flashpoint, I I, I suggest that if they're going to do a, a reboot of the DCU, yes, there be a Superman, but I don't think it should start with him. 
And I, I just don't think we should see him much because he is like the big MacGuffin usually, which I mean, there's a lot in the DC universe, but he's the most famous one. That That's what I hope they do. But, just but again, bring it back. I know, but like, even it, the, the problem, the problem with Superman is always writing. Right. Yeah. Like lazy writers. Oh, well, I've got this super powerful character that can like, you know, punch a moon. What do I do? Oh, kryptonite. It's always kryptonite. You could you could defeat Superman just by not dressing up in a costume and standing in the middle of Metropolis going, try to foil my plan. Like you could just like you, you could you could start executing people all over the world. You know, without – and Superman wouldn't be able to do shit about it. You could make the writing yeah. – you could write it in a way where it's not it's not his his strength and, you know, his, his invulnerability that is going to save him. It's got to be something else like his, you know, his job as a – as in the press or, you know, something like that. Have to make him think, you know? I think – um you could put him through emotional trauma much easier than you can put him through physical trauma. Right. I think the, I think the issue with Man of Steel and, you know, Batman v Superman is this, they wanted to give Superman a struggle, but the struggle they gave him is like, should I be the savior of Earth or not? Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and people hated him because, you know, for whatever reason. And, like, I don't know. Uh, it's like, why it wasn't the struggle him dealing with the fact that he was an alien, you know, like he deals with that in the movie, but that's not what his internal struggle is. Mm. Or know? struggling with people trying to, to, um, to trust him. Like he's just right. brand new on the scene. Right. It's right. like they, most people faced with that would be afraid. Well, that's my, that is my, one of my biggest issues with that movie besides the, characterization of jonathan kent it's you know boom this guy shows up in this red and blue costume and it's like all right i'm gonna come save you now it was like, especially especially when they they brought in um batman and he was like they a lot of people were already against batman and right. now you've got a guy flying around who's invulnerable you, you should they, the the current situation there should have been they would be more scared of him Right, right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like, at least in the Donner version, they show him rescuing a cat from a tree and foiling and, and a helping bank the rope. police. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those were, and that was good. See, that was great characterization because you got a feel for what he was trying yes. to do and, and you, it brought the story up to the point where, okay, so society sees him this way, especially with the cat. I mean, it's like, you know. It, it showed you, it brought you along to the point where you understood where he was in fit in the world. Right. Yep. So I think that's why I like Brandon Ruth Superman so much. Cause that guy's just acting alone. Always gave me like a feeling of like the Christopher Reeve Superman. Yeah. And you, I, I instantly get that characterization of him. Just, just the way his face is. I don't know, but if the storyline had been better, that would have been a really good reboot. Yeah. Well, that and if they had gotten a better actress for Lois, not one that was just out of her teens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. And Super Baby. All right. Yeah, yeah. Moving on, John, you were wrong. Ah, uh, that happens a lot. HBO Max. <laughs> well, no, you weren't wrong, and <gasps> and you called out HBO Max, and because you got so angry. Uh -huh. At HBO for trying to play a bait and switch with the DC properties. Oh, they're they have, keeping them. Up. Yeah. Now they have reversed course and said that they're going to keep the majority of the DC movies at least through December. Now. Yeah. So they're still they're still playing it they're still playing it at Disney side. You know, it's like yeah we'll, we'll keep it till then and then we'll take it out for a year and then we'll <laughs> then we'll you know use use putting them back. As a big you know, draw to get more. People it's going to into on. the vault. Hurry yeah, up. Exactly. It's going yep. into the vault. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, you can't go to the used uh, music store or video store and buy a used copy. No, it's going in the vault, <laughs> which uh, nowadays is a little bit tougher. Yeah. I think they're buying time. I think there's a lot of riding on the Snyder cut. 
uh, because of the just the swell of popularity with it that maybe they're actually they, they could extend this longer if because I, I think they're gaining some interest in this HBO Max. I know Volsker, my brother, has it, and he enjoys some stuff on there. And I've heard some good things about Swamp Thing, of course, Watchmen, and OJD watched. Um, so it's too, bad. It's too bad Swamp Thing's already like. Yeah, I know. Unless, unless, unless all the because you know this this is one of those few um, series that um, they they had already canceled it because they were playing games with DC Universe and. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure the HBO Max thing was in the works and also a streaming service from Warner, supposedly, mm-hmm. when they killed it. Um, and now there's so much interest because everybody who's seen it has said, hey, this is actually really good. It's like maybe, maybe they'll bring it back. It would be nice if they did. They might. Only DC can screw the pooch on Superman, Batman. <laughs> but Swamp. hey, Swamp Thing. Yeah. Holy great. Yeah. And, but, but they, I mean, in the end, they still screwed it, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, but basically they did the worst, the worst oh, they could look. have. They made it actually good and yeah. then took it away. Oh, <laughs> oh, look, this is working. This is great. Okay. We're done. They, they pulled a firefly basically. So, yeah. so not only did they announce the movies that were there, uh, Dawn of Justice, Justice League, Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, um, were, which, which were originally we're going to leave in July or staying, um, but they've also said they're – oh, wait. Where is it? Adaption of Watchmen. Yeah, so Zack Snyder's Adaption of Watchmen, the Superman franchise, so the original Superman movies. However, mm-hmm. Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, Catwoman, Jonah Hex, and The Losers will still be leaving on July 1st. Mm. Well, Catwoman's no loss. <laughs> yeah, no one's worried about that. I mean, they're probably getting rid of that to bring people in. <laughs> Like, no, no you again, won't, you won't find it here. You're my, safe. My guess <laughs> is that there's some kind of deal where they're supposed to go on Netflix, and uh, they, you know, it was already a contract that they're going to get out of. Mm. So, and there's probably some kind of deal where it's like, oh well, if it's on our streaming service, it can't be on yours. <sighs> like, that's just added such a weird wrinkle to all of this. These streaming services now, um, and it's going to be nuts. You know, where it's like when you have things like HBO Max and Netflix and Hulu, where it's not geared towards one property, so they can have a bunch of different stuff on it. Things will be jumping, I think, from different services back and forth. You know, like what yeah. was it? Uh, um, the Office and I think Friends were taken off of Netflix so that they could go onto the the NBC streaming app or ABC, whichever one. Which one's the Peacock? Uh, NBC. NBC. NBC, yes. Yeah. So the NBC app, you know, and it's like, really? Like, why can't you guys all play nice? But, you know, they're trying to get you to sign up for their service. Ugh. Yeah, that's, that's, ugh. Like, imagine if I had to put up with that with video games. Like, oh, it's on my PlayStation. Great. Oh, it's no longer there. Like, that was... <sighs> Hey, hey, with with the full online thing, you never know. They might try playing that at some point. Oh, well, well, don't even say it. Don't put that out there, John. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> All right. Well, on that uh, happy news, now we're going to go to a completely different wheelhouse. Um, it has been revealed by the chin himself. Dad. Um, uh-oh. We're good. We're good? Okay. Mm. <laughs> Bruce Campbell, the chin himself, has revealed the next Evil Dead movie will be called Evil Dead Rise, and it will not feature Ash at all. Uh, I am a <laughs> fan of those movies. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, you know, of course, very famous uh, franchise at this point, uh, independent franchise that grew. Um but Ash apparently is done. What do you guys think about that? Didn't he, he, he kind of passed the torch in the Ash versus Evil Dead, right? Right. The TV show. Yeah. So he kind of passed the torch there. So I guess, I guess it kind of works and he's getting a little bit old. Um, a little bit. So, you know, maybe, maybe it is time. I mean, I, I, I would watch him in anything because he's just that good. Um, he's, he's awesome. 
But, uh, you know, that's if he's not going to be in it, you know, maybe they can mention a minute or something, but or, or, you know, show that he had passed the torch in the in the Ash versus Evil Dead kind of tie him all together. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a Evil Dead aficionado, but my brother is. And so I'm going to paraphrase him a little bit here. I guess he's saying that this is actually how, like, the original story went. Um, I don't know if that's true. I just hope that this is just because he's working with Sam Raimi so we can see him in the multiverse of madness. That's, that's what I want. <laughs> that would work too. That would be a, a very good reason. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I think John's a, a good part, right? Like he's Bruce Campbell's probably like, I'm getting too old for this. Um, and yes, uh, Sam Raimi isn't doing the movie either. Uh, that was the other thing that was revealed. So it's kind of like, I don't know. To me, the thing that makes those movies is Bruce Campbell as Ash. Like, the Does it make it Bush League since it's not him and it's not – do you think it will be perceived that way? Depends on, again, the writing. But. Yeah, exactly. And that's the whole thing. you know. And, like, they did that Evil Dead remake, which even, like, Sam Raimi and, and, and Bruce Campbell both said that they liked. And he obviously they weren't involved with it. Um, but they tried to make it more of a – Back to a truth as a serious horror movie. Mm. And it's like, eh, it didn't, like, it doesn't work, in, in my mm. opinion. Like, to me, what makes those movies works is Bruce Campbell. And I kind of feel like, yeah. if you're taking him out of the equation, I'm not interested anymore. You know, well, it's that, like, it, that, that in a certain level of ludicrousness, like, you know, it's like, it's horror, yeah. horror, horror, and then something really stupid or, or funny happens. Right. I mean, it was, it was, I don't know, that's like, I cannot imagine how you balance that and, but Raimi can, Raimi can do that. Right. Yeah. No, that's yeah, true. Okay. That's funny that you mentioned ludicrous because I was thinking about space balls just now. It's like making <laughs> that a serious movie. Like you could, you right. could never do that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I just, I, yeah, I think the charm is in the, the B movie, make fun of ourselves, Bruce Campbell, uh, being Ash. <clears throat> uh, yeah. I don't think they're going to get the serious tone or at least if they do, no one is not going to be as receptive to it. It's like, um, and I don't know if you guys are probably not fans of the nightmare and Elm street movies, but it's like when they rebooted it and then they got someone else to play Freddy. And it's like, yeah, no, Robert England is what makes those movies work. Yep. You know, it's his wit and his, the one liners. And it's just like, yeah, nah, like it, it just, you know, it's it's the same kind of thing. You know, I, I couldn't think of another franchise. It just happened to be another horror movie. But, uh, yeah, when you replace the main guy, I think it's like, eh, I'm out. But I could be wrong. I don't know. We'll have to uh, wait and see, as I always say. So Maybe they can replace him with Henry Cavill. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We'll have to see. He's too busy being draught in Superman, I think. <laughs> To, to replace his hand with a chainsaw. Um, that would be awesome, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I think we're, uh, we're, we're that's that's all the news that's fit to print this week. So, so we're gonna wrap it up as we usually do with uh, recommendations. Um, Don, you have any recommendations? And of course, you want to pimp out your uh, podcast while you're here. <laughs> I I do have uh, recommendations. And uh, so, yeah, I recommend this great book. It's called Apex. It's written by this dude. Um, oh, oh, you were paid. <laughs> J.D. Oliv yeah, Oliva. No, seriously, I, I bought and paid. <laughs> um, no, it's, it's good stuff. I, um, it's very comic booky, which is how he got me to, you know, as soon as he said that, I went and I purchased it, and I'm about 40% of the way through, and uh, it's, it's really, really interesting. So I, I recommend you do that. Uh, it is, it's not his normal writing, which I still think is cool, but, uh, I, I do enjoy the, the comic book, uh, part of that as well. Um, other than that, go to superhero speak, uh, look at some of my, well, listen to the podcast, of course, and look at some of my comic book reviews. One guy even yelled at me. He didn't like my Ninja Turtles review. So I didn't know, I didn't know enough about a, you know, 
20, 25 year old storyline. So, <laughs> but, uh, How yeah. dare you? <laughs> it's just, it was weird. Like I, I tried it out and it's like, you look at it, it's like, okay, Donatello's a cyborg. Raphael's the head of the foot clan. <laughs> All right. This, okay. This comic was strange back in the day. Yes. Um, but yeah, they introduced lady shredder, but then never reveal who she is. And so I guess next issue, as I was corrected, uh, will be <laughs> <laughs> when they, they start the new storyline that will reveal. So check that out. And of course, uh, the house of D podcast on, uh, you know, where you get podcasts as well as we do it live on Twitch and uh, the House of D YouTube. Just uh, just keep ticking people off with your reviews and we'll get more <laughs> interaction on the website. That's that's all we really yeah. need. Uh, how about you, John? All right. I'm going to I'm going to go like with a deep cut here. So um, there's there there's a guy, uh, a, a writer named Jim Butcher, uh, who is probably one of the. He's probably the best urban fantasy writer right now of our generation. He he wrote a series of books called uh, The Dresden Files. Um, he The plan for the books was that there's going to be, I think, 23 books. And the last three books are going to be a three-book um, Armageddon. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So he, he had some uh, – I think he's up to like book 15 – he had some um, health issues and and he got divorced and he was away for a couple of years uh, and we are finally getting his next book, Peace Talks. Mm-hmm. And it's about to come out, I think, next month. But you should really start with the first book, Stormfront, and read them all the way through. You won't be disappointed. They are they are literally the best um, urban fantasy series out there right now so and it just by the time you get to where i am now and waiting for peace talks to come out you will be you will understand why all of his fans are frothing at the mouth and yeah. and you'll understand why he has such a high rating on amazon yeah i have to reread the last at least the last book before it comes out um i'm just going to reread all of them because it's it, just it's about that time it's been a while and i'm trying to remember was it ghost story no, Ghost Story's been a while. Ghost Story was like ten. The last one was the heist one, I think. Yeah, right. What was that? I don't remember. Ah, uh, gods, I remember. I forget now. I'd uh, have to go to Goodreads. But I uh, mean, just you have to. They're they're just amazing. Yeah, so uh, so we're both fans of the that series. Um, mm-hmm. cool. I actually have a recommendation this week, a real one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have been catching up on podcasts and listened to a couple I haven't listened to in a long time. And I listened to the ID10T podcast. Uh, for those who aren't familiar, that was originally The Nerdist. And then when Chris Hardwick uh, separated to, to so that he could still own the podcast but separated from the company, he changed the name to ID10T. Uh, that's m- more than enough information that you need. But the, his guest this week was Louis Anderson, um, mm. one of my favorite comedians. Oh, uh, Louis. Yeah. And <laughs> um, he is probably one of the sweetest human beings on the planet. And it just, sure. it just comes through in this interview. So what I'm saying is with everything that's going on in the world and how dark everything seems and how – Crazy, everything is going on, and and you so, want something- so basically, the, because it's Snyder, where Snyder wrote this year. Exactly, Snyder wrote <laughs> 2020. Um, We're the DCU this year. If you want something that that may just make you feel good about yourself and feel a little uplifted and just be happy, check out that uh, that episode. Um, it's the latest episode of ID10T. Uh, I mean, unless one comes out after this, but uh, Lou Anderson, you know, be one of the last. Cool. Uh, one of the last couple episodes. So, yeah. And of course, I will also recommend that people go to superherospeak.com where you can find the podcast every week. And of course, comic book reviews by a good friend, D Square. And of course, you can also find all the places to follow us on social media so you can be part of Social Media Madness next week. So until then, as always, thanks for listening and don't let your cape caught in the door. Have a good week.